Hi, I'm Eric Glotzer. You know that throughout history there have been pivotal individuals and pivotal events that have shaped the course of our nation. Brief encounters or episodes in history that touch our collective heartstring and bind us together as one nation in spite of our regional and cultural differences. These people and events become the fabric of our national psyche. James Bowie and the sandbar duel which made him famous are some of the earliest laces binding our national fabric. James Bowie was a man of great mystery, controversy. He left a very limited paper trail. At one point, five states claimed to be his birthplace, but it was recently determined that he was born in Logan County, Kentucky in the spring of 1796. At an early age, his family moved into Louisiana. And although he was raised on a modest plantation, Bowie was a classic frontiersman. When James Bowie was in his 20s, he moved into Rapides Parish near the town of Alexandria. And there he became very friendly with the Wells and Cuny families, cousins, who uh, were part of the political power at that time. There's a story that James became engaged to Cecilia Wells, but she would die before their wedding. But the uh, Wells and Cunies were challenged by another political faction, and the resulting feud erupted in a great deal of violence uh, around the Alexandria area, with a number of people shooting and stabbing each other. Two political factions dominated Alexandria, Louisiana back in the 1820s. James Bowie was a member of one. He had arrived on a steamboat up the Red River to Alexandria. Emerging from the boat, friends of his advised him that Major Norris Wright, from the other, other political party, was spreading scandalous rumors. Bowie stormed into town, found Major Wright in the salon of Bailey's Hotel. Bowie stepped up to Wright, and although Bowie was unarmed, he challenged Wright. Was it true, Bowie demanded, had Wright been spreading these rumors? Wright responded by standing, pulling a pistol from under his coat and firing at Bowie. The pistol ball only grazed Bowie's ribs. But that incident would compel Bowie to begin carrying a weapon. He had no confidence in the pistols of his day, large, clumsy, single-shot weapons. But he had an old hunting knife. After that, he would carry that old knife with him all the time. His brother Reason described that knife. He said it was nine and a quarter inches long and blade not curved a straight back design very similar to this. Bowie had a keen scabbard made up for that knife and resolved he would carry it for as long as he lived. The political strife that divided Alexandria was the foundation for the famous sandbar fight. But as so often is the case in a duel, the real cause was the honor of a woman. Dr. Thomas Maddox, who was in the opposing political faction from James Bowie and his friends, the Wells and Cunies, had said some disparaging things about one of Wells' sisters, and that would prompt Samuel Wells III to engage in an affair of honor with Dr. Maddox. By affair of honor, of course, I mean a duel. The tradition began in Europe and was firmly entrenched in the Southern aristocracy. In fact, you had to be a gentleman in order to engage in a duel, an affair of honor. Every Southern gentleman would have had his own cased set of elaborate dueling pistols. The reason that James Bowie and Norris Wright never fought a duel was simply that Wright did not consider Bowie to be a gentleman. Therefore, Wright was not obligated to face him on the field of honor. Intriguingly, almost every state had outlawed the practice of dueling. So what they would do is they would go from one state to the next, fight their duel, and the survivors would then return back to their home state with no fear of extradition. Another term for dueling was to cross the river. And indeed, the gentlemen in Alexandria, Louisiana would cross the Mississippi River and fight their duel in the Natchez, Mississippi area. The men who were actually directly involved in a duel, the men who would fire shots at each other, were called principals. And they would ask their very best friends to represent them, to act for them, to be their seconds. The seconds were responsible for all the arrangements. 
In the case of the sandbar duel, the arrangements were made right here, near Peter Little's sawmill at Natchez under the hill. At that time, the seconds determined that the duel would be fought the very next day, September 19th, at noon, on the first sandbar above the city of Natchez. Along with their seconds, each principal would also have a physician to take care of him, and they would also invite friends to come witness the affair of honor and make sure that it was fair and honorable. Both the men who would become most famous from this incident were merely witnesses, not combatants. James Bowie was a witness on the side of Mr. Samuel Wells. Major Norris Wright was a witness for Dr. Thomas Maddox. And these two factions represented the power struggle in Alexandria, Louisiana. Vidalia, Louisiana served as sort of a front door to the Louisiana Territory, a place where men could come and completely reinvent themselves. There was a saying at that time, at that place, if you did not have a title before your name, judge, colonel, major, that meant you either had no friends or no imagination. Most of the men on that sandbar would have titles before their names. We don't know how legitimate those titles were. But James Bowie was simply referred to as Mr. Bowie, despite the fact he had friends and imagination. 